hey hello people to gurukula so here is an video series on web application penetration testing and this video is all about setting up a dvwa which is an vulnerable web application inside and kali linux environment so that we can able to practice our web penetration testing skills so previously in this web application penetration testing lecture series we have discussed the various technologies that is used in web application development if you are directly landed on this particular video this is an web application penetration testing series and the link for the complete playlist is available in the description box below i recommend you to check that out so in order to set up the environment we will be requiring a virtual box which you can download from the given link and also we will be requiring a kali linux virtual machine which can also be downloaded from the links the links to download all these applications is actually given in the description box and i recommend you to download it before proceeding through the rest of the video so what actually we are going to set up so just to give you an overview of how our testing setup is going to be we are just working on the open source web server architecture which is a good starting point to learn our web application penetration testing uh, knowledge so here we will be using the lamp architecture as we discussed in the yesterday's video or in the last video there are several technology stacks that is used for web application development and in this particular series we will be following an architecture called that is lamp architecture here l stands for the linux a stands for apache server and my sql is the database which you are going to use and then we will be going to use the php for web application development so linux is going to be our operating system of the web servers and apache is going to be the uh, web server which is going to handle all our uh, http request and response and we are going to use mysql as the database in order to store the content like usernames password and all other remaining data in our web application and we are going to develop our web uh, application entirely by using a php programming language so here in this particular video we are not going to develop any web application we already have a web application which is developed by using php and we are going to make use of this particular web application that is what dvwa is that is dam vulnerable web application which we are going to clone from the github and the rest of the things we are going to set it up in this particular video so our testing setup graphically can be visualized as you will be working on a windows host machine or at least I am working on a Windows host machine and inside that we are going to install our virtual box application and in that virtual box application we are going to set up our Kali Linux virtual machine so that we are going to install the Linux machine which we need for our uh, tech stack and we are going to deploy a dam vulnerable web application which is uh, from now called as dvwa inside our kali linux we are going to host a web application inside the kali linux itself and in order to check the transactions between our client and then the web application your client is going to be your mozilla firefox or any browser which is present in the kali linux and to check that thing we need a zap or burp uh, suit to intercept the packets between dam vulnerable web application and then your client so as a client we have a firefox and the information exchange is going to we are going to set up our zap or burp as a proxy in between dam vulnerable web application or and the firefox server so any information from the firefox that we type in is going through zap or burp suit and your burp suit is going to transfer those packets to your dam vulnerable web application and any responses from the dvwa will be fetched by the zap and it will be forwarded to the firefox so that by looking into the zap or burp interface we can clearly able to intercept all the packets that is exchanged between the client and then the server here the server is nothing but it's dam vulnerable web application we are going to set it up so this is an a graphical idea of what we are going to set up in the next couple of minutes 
so this is a follow along video so hence i recommend you to pass the video here and i expect you to download all the required components from the links given in the description box and you can install the vmware we are not going to waste our time on taking you through installing a particular software i believe that you are all very familiar with that and then keep your vmware application installed and ready and also i recommend you to download the kali linux vm from the link given in the description box and then extract it and keep it somewhere so that we are going to just load the vm so once you are ready to start up let's set up our testing environment so once your virtual box is installed you will be getting a uh, simpler interface and there what you can do is you can simply click on this add icon and then you will have to navigate uh, to the place where you have actually downloaded that Kali Linux machine so you can just Kali Linux double click and then you will see this particular application and you can simply click on open so clicking it on open will give you an another Kali Linux machine like this as of this forget about the first machine that is for uh, some other purposes and as of now DVWA series for Gurukula is the VM which we are going to work for the entire series at least for the DVWA series so once this is done you can just right click on this and then you can click on settings and in settings if you need to rename this particular vm for your convenience of course you can change this particular name and then you can go to system and then i recommend you to give at least 8 gb of uh, the ram space so that it will be easy for us to do most of our job in case if your laptop or uh, the system on which you are working on doesn't support uh, the high configurations maybe you can adjust it accordingly but 8 GB is on the safer side and then you can just uh, click on the processors tab here and then you can just increase the number of processors to 6 processors and the next setting you have to make is go to the network tab here and then please ensure that the it is attached to NAT here and then click on this expand and then you should ensure that this cable connected is checked and if that is everything is all fine you can just click on ok and possibly this is how your uh, vm machine should also look like and all these configurations are mentioned over here and once all these things are ready you are ready to fire up our kali linux machine so we can just click on the Kali Linux machine now just double click on this VM that is going to start your Kali Linux VM let's wait until it's booted up so now it is booted up initially your login name is uh, login username is Kali and the password is also Kali and just hit enter so that is going to give you an interface of your Kali Linux and once it is all set let me just ensure that your Kali Linux is having the internet connection just click on the Firefox application which you can see on top and then okay so I will just try to visit um, YouTube and yes uh, I think I can able to load youtube over here and now uh, it is actually transferring the data it loads so the internet connection is working fine so i think we are all set to proceed so we need to first go to the um, dvwa github uh, place so that you can just load uh, google and where you can search on dvwa so here is the dvwa so you can just click on this the first one so this is the github repository of uh, the dvwa so what we have to do is we will have to just copy this particular link which we are going to clone into our particular website it means uh, we are going to clone this into our uh, kali linux so just copy this particular link and then you can open up our terminal that you can take it from here
so there our terminal is let me zoom in so that you can able to see the comments okay we wanted to clone this particular github in the html uh, directory so we have to navigate to that particular directory so slash var uh, slash www slash html so you are expected to move to this particular place and then we are uh, we just wanted to clone this particular dwa web application into this directory so the command to clone is uh, sudo super user do uh, jit clone and you can just paste uh, the url that you have to copy and then just hit enter it will ask you for the password a password in our case is again kali just type kali and then hit enter so this is going to clone the entire um, dwa web application into our uh, directory and then you can just see what are all the files that has been copied by simply using the ls command and you can actually able to see that there is a folder created um, like dwa so the github is completely cloned now we just have to assign the permissions for this particular folder so we are going to give uh, full privileges for this dwa folder so the command is sudo chmod and then hyphen r and it is triple seven so read write and execute so all we are going for user the thing and dwa strict so we are just going to give the complete permissions and now the complete permissions have been done and now let us uh, change our directory so here actually you can see the config kind of thing so that is what we are trying to change over here so cd config when i list the files you can actually see config.inc this is the default configuration file which is available so in order to keep it safe it is a best practice to copy this configuration file um, and then we can make the modifications in the copied version so that if anything goes wrong we will have a correct copy for the backup so command for copying this particular thing is cp so that's copy so and you can type config.inc.png.dist to config.inc so you will have to save this as config.inc.php so that is enough you can just click on enter so that uh, now a copy has been created just to check we can just type on ls and you can see that the config.inc.php has been created so now we just have to modify certain things over here in this particular configuration file and for me i am just going to use uh, a nano editor so i will be using sudo uh, nano so there you have the configuration file so here what you are expected to do is to just scroll all the way down and then here you can able to see that um, the db user so here the db user is given as dwa and that DB, CM, db user can be changed as user and the password can be changed as pass just for the configuration purposes and please do remember uh, this so now we have made necessary changes on this particular um, configuration file so what you have to do is you will have to write these changes and then you have to get 
out of this particular nano editor so you can just hit ctrl o so that actually writes the modification whatever that you have done and then you can click on ctrl x so that will close the nano editor so that's the entire configuration which we have to perform on the dvwa part now the next part is to configure the database so let me clear up my screen and first as already said we are going to use mysql as the database so initially all the services will be turned off so that we will have to start the services when it is running for the first time so the command to start the service is service uh, mysql start then hit enter it will ask you for the password just give the password so if it does not throw you any error it means that your uh, mysql is running and then now we will have to enter into the database so this sudo mysql the username we are going to specify the username that is hyphen u and the username to enter is root and then the password is as of now there is no password you can just hit enter as it is so now we have entered into our mysql database powered by mariadb so now you can uh, create an user what we have changed in the previous section so there in the dvwa we have created a user with uh, password who, who can be identified using the password called pass so that entry has to be created here in this particular database and the command for that is uh, create user and the name of the user is user itself it should be given in quotes and we have loaded our dvwa at uh, the local system itself so we will have to give the local address so in our case it is 127.0.0.1 so it should also be given in a single quote and it can be identified by password is pass and then a semicolon so just hit enter okay now it has been accepted uh, earlier i just um, entered a space there it should not there should not be any space so once the user is created now we have created a user whose password is pass and now we have to grant him or grant this particular user with all the privileges so the command is grant all privileges on uh, our web application is dwa.star for all the services in dvwa to whom to uh, user very easy at 127.0.0.1 and he is identified by a password pass and then a semicolon so now we have been assigned all the user privileges now the user is created so i think we can just exit from this database setup so now we have came out so let me clear this out so the next step is to configure now we have linux in place and we have dvwa that is our web application which is locally hosted and we have set it up our database also so next we need a server so as already said we are going to use apache server here so we will be uh, changing our directory to 
the server configuration so we have to change our directory to etc and php uh, slash 8.2 slash apache 2 so that's my version in case if 802 is if you are working on the same thing you will also get the 8.2 otherwise you will have to check which version of apache is being uh, worked on your kali linux and then you can just navigate to that particular folder and then let me just list out the files present here yeah now we have that uh, php dot initialization file so this is what the file which we wanted to edit uh, now so same we will be using the nano editor so you can use sudo nano we have php.ini just click on enter so here you are expected to scroll all the way down and then you will have to search for uh, a parameter called allow url f open so let me just search for that parameter So here under F open WAPS, you will find that allow URL F open should be on. Just ensure that it is on and then allow URL include this should also be on. If it is off, you can just type on and then you will have to write. So control O is for overwrite and control X is for exiting. So once all these uh, things are saved we can just um, start the apache service also so earlier we started our mysql service so similarly we will have to start our apache service also so command is service apache to start so it will ask you for password just enter the password and if it doesn't throw any error then i believe that everything is okay so now we have set it up everything in lamp architecture uh, l a m p everything is ready so we will just minimize this and then i will just open up an another tab and we will see if our dvwa is properly hosted or not so we have to visit the link http colon double slash 127.0.0.1 uh, slash dvwa and then we are trying to set up dot uh, php so that's the starting page which we are trying to host on yes so everything has been properly set it up and then you can able to see that our web application is locally hosted and then the login php page has been displayed here so once you are on this particular page congratulations that you have successfully set up your damn vulnerable web application in your kali linux platform so once you have reached this particular page you can scroll all the way down and then you will see all the settings that whatever that we have um, configured over there so as you can see that uh, allow urlf open is on and uh, include is also on so once checking all these parameters you can just click on create and reset database so that is going to create the entire database and you will be automatically redirected to this login page so once you have reached this particular login page it is completely set up we have an web application um, that is running inside our kali linux machine so now we are free to explore this particular web application to understand lots of vulnerabilities which usually present in a web application so initially uh, to feed your curiosity the username for the default username is admin and the password is password itself and when you click on enter so it's going to show you the welcome page so this is the damn vulnerable web application which we are going to 
uh, use for this entire series and we will be exploring all these vulnerabilities one after the other by using different tools in Kali Linux. So these are all the OASP top 10 vulnerabilities or yet there are other vulnerabilities are also present. So for any web application pen testers understanding the vulnerabilities and how to exploit that vulnerability is very much important only then we can take control of any particular web application so we'll be using this particular web application so considering the length of the video i'll be starting i will be stopping my video here and we will be discussing the rest of the context we will talk a lot about dwa in the next upcoming uh, video series and then we will start exploring what brute force attack is command injection attack is CSRF cross-site request forgery attack is we will see all these attacks one after the other in the subsequent videos and one best part about damn vulnerable web application is when you click on this DVWA security so this will allow you to practice the web application testing at different difficulty level so you have low you have medium security you have high security so low security is like the web application does not have any security principles at place uh, so that you can easily break into the system so this will be the good place to start off with if you are just starting it up and then later on by gaining skills you can just increase the security level to medium so that even though this is a bad security practice but this will not be as easy as um, what you have practiced at low so you can just increase the security methods uh, and then you can able to see whether you can able to crack inside that web application or not so you have three levels of difficulties to play around one is low medium and high and finally there is an another method that is impossible which actually tells you that it is safe against all the vulnerabilities which means you cannot break in so these are all the best practices which we have to keep in mind as a web developer while we are developing any particular web application so that is also there so being an ethical hacker it is not only important for us to break into the system but also we should know how to secure that particular system so that's the thing which is awaiting for you in the subsequent videos so we have came to the end of this particular video in this session we just showed you how to set up a dvwa inside the kali linux and this is going to be our test environment for the rest of the videos in this particular series so you can just rewatch the entire video again in case if you have missed somewhere you just use it as a follow along video just follow these steps one after the other so definitely you will also have the dvwa installed in your kali linux so before we uh, before you watch the rest of the videos make sure that you are uh, this environment is present with you so that you will have an uh, hands-on session along with us when the subsequent videos are released so in the next video we will talk a lot about uh, brute force attack we will try to understand what brute force is and how do we perform a brute force attack on a web application so we will perform brute force in both low level security and medium level security as well high level security will be thought once we have completed all the vulnerabilities i will give you all the hard level securities at the end of this particular video series because hard level security web application cracking um, requires chaining multiple attacks one after the other so only if you understand all the vulnerabilities well we can able to go for the hard one so we will see low and medium first and then once after completing all the vulnerabilities we will be discussing the hard level of exploiting this particular web application so i'll stop the video here i'm going to see you in the next video until then it's bye from jay and happy learning